Welcome back to the show, everybody. If you are joining this on the live stream, I really appreciate you being here. Excited to uh, to talk with you all today. If you are listening to this uh, on your podcast, I uh, appreciate you tuning in. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel to be updated regularly uh, about the show and add us wherever you listen to your podcast. Again, super excited to be back and talking with you today. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about the scale and the role that it plays in our weight loss journey. And if you do happen to be joining this on the live stream and you have a question that you'd like me to answer, go ahead and hop into the chat now on YouTube and ask those questions. And if you're listening to this on podcast and would like to join us for one of our live shows, be sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel so you get notifications anytime we are going live so that you can ask us your questions. Again, go ahead and put those now in the chat. So today, Again, we're doing a deep dive into a topic that a lot of people uh, either struggle with or have questions about, and that is around the scale and our weights when we are on a weight loss journey. But before we jump into that, we're going to take just a brief moment uh, for a word from the sponsor of today's episode. We'd like to thank today's sponsor, Premier Protein. If you've been following my journey for a while, you know how important it is for me to find simple and effective ways to get my protein in, especially with my busy lifestyle. That's where Premier Protein comes in. This isn't just any protein shake. It's been a game changer for me. I usually break my fast with one of these. Why? Well, it's packed with 30 grams of protein and it's low in sugar, making it the perfect first meal of the day for me. It keeps me full, fuels my muscle, and supports my recovery after workout. Plus, the taste, they're really good. I've always been a fan of their cafe latte flavor, but they've got a variety of options to suit any taste. It's like having a treat without the guilt. And for those of you who are always on the go like me, Premier Protein Shakes are super convenient. Just grab one on your way out the door and you're set. So if you're looking to support your fitness goals and need a convenient, tasty way to up your protein intake, give Premier Protein a try. Trust me, your taste buds and your muscles will thank you. And remember, it's all about progress over perfection. We all know the uh, the frustration uh, that comes with stepping on the scale and seeing a number that does not reflect our hard work. Um, I think whenever you embark on a weight loss journey, whether it's at the beginning or you could be a few weeks in, you know, seeing that number uh, not reflect the things that you're putting in, whether it's changes to your nutrition, uh, increased exercise, getting better sleep. If you don't see the number that you think you should be seeing, that is absolutely something that can derail your progress. And I know exactly what that's like. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today, get into some of your questions. Um, and again, just looking, looking forward uh, to sharing with each and every one of you. So the first thing to understand with the scale is that the scale is just a tool. Um, it is what we use to measure a portion of our progress. It is not the end all be all. And when I say a we use it to measure some of our progress. There are lots of things that we do to measure progress. Now, sometimes we get so fixated on the scale um, that we forget that the reason that we are looking to lose weight in the first place is to live a longer, healthier, more active life, to feel more confident. And sometimes we forget about some of those other ways that we can measure our progress. Now, whenever, uh, I am coaching somebody. We talk about all those different forms of measurement, things like how our clothes are fitting, how we are feeling. That's one that we often forget. Um, if you have more energy, if you have the ability to go out and do things, if you want to do things, and that is improving over time, that is a measure of progress. The scale is not the end-all be-all. It is just a tool that we use to measure. Now, if you are going to use the scale and use it frequently, I am some Somebody who when I was losing weight and even currently I weigh myself very frequently, but I am now at a place where I don't make adjustments to what I'm doing based off of that number that I see on the scale. Um, I just use that to track my progress. It is just data, just a point. So if you are going to measure your self frequency, the thing that you want to look for is you just want to look for trends over time. And when we talk about what kind of time frame are we looking at, you should be looking in terms of weeks and months with the scale, not just days and 
any week to week weigh in. That's another thing with all of my coaching clients. I never look at that week to week weigh in. I'm always looking at the overall trend line. Now, if you're somebody who's seeing that seeing a number on the scale goes up, if that makes you question what you're doing, then my recommendation is you weigh less frequently. Now, it's easy to let the scale kind of dictate our mood, but the thing to understand is that you just have to look back and know that the thing that you need to make adjustments on um, is going to be those actions that we are taking. It's not just, um, you can't see the scale go up in a week and think that the things that you did in the previous week weren't working. You may need to adjust some of them, but not all of them. Um, And if the scale is going to be something where you see the number go up and you are questioning whether or not what you're doing is working, that's why I recommend you just use some of those other forms of measurement. Are you more physically active than you have been? Are your clothes fitting differently? Um, Those are some of the things to look at. Now, from a practical standpoint, when you're using the scale, it is very important that you weigh at a consistent time, meaning I weigh always in the morning after I get up, I go to the restroom, before I eat anything, before I drink anything, after I use the restroom, always just in my underwear. So it's the same amount of clothing every time. That does play a difference because our weight can fluctuate multiple pounds throughout the day just based off of the weight of food and water. I always like to say if you had a 16-ounce a bottle of water, you drink that, you step on the scale, you're going to be up a pound. The scale is a measurement of weight. It's not body fat. And what we want to do is lose body fat. So again, those are some things to think about. And um, don't let the form of measuring your progress dictate what you are doing. Now, moving on to uh, some questions. We have our first question coming in. And that is from Sky. Sky says, what is a good way to start intermittent fasting? So if you've never done intermittent fasting before, if it's something you're interested in, it is not the only way to lose weight. It's my preferred method uh, to lose weight. There are a few people that are recommended that don't do intermittent fasting. Some of those are uh, children or people that haven't yet fully matured. Um, You shouldn't be looking to do intermittent fasting if you haven't yet gone through maturity. Um, Pregnant and nursing mothers is another one that's not recommended to fasting. But in order to get started, my recommendation is you start with just a 14 or a 16 hour fast very simply um, and you stop eating at around 8 p.m. and don't start eating again until noon. Don't overcomplicate it. Um, Build your fasting muscle. Uh, That's a a phrase, um, a friend of mine, Jackie, the intermittent fasting foodie, she talks about, you know, building the fasting muscle. And I think Jen Stevens may, may refer it to that way as well. It's don't be concerned about all of the other things that you can do to do it perfectly. Just simply don't eat for 16 hours. Stop eating at eight, start eating again at noon. And once you have done that consistently for a few weeks, then you can start um, looking at some other things that you can do to enhance your fasting. Things like breaking your fast with a protein, not having too many carbs before you end your fast so that you have that spike and drop in blood sugar that's going to just trigger you to be more hungry. So my recommendation is keep it very simple. Just do 16 hours, stop eating at eight, start eating again at noon. Next question rolling in, coming in from GB, and GB says, hey, Ryan, I am I okay to drink cow's milk in my coffee during a fast? I know it isn't optimal, but it is surely better than not fasting at all. Thanks, man. Love from the UK, Graham. So, Graham, you hit the nail on the head. First, I love the question, and secondly, I love that your mindset is is kind of already tuned into what I was going to say, which is... At the end of the day, if you are choosing intermittent fasting as your tool for weight loss, if you came to intermittent fasting because you do want to see the number on the scale go down, the real reason that it works is it helps us manage our overall calories. Now, there are a lot of additional benefits for intermittent fasting, um, things like it can help with uh, some of your gut health by giving you just a period of rest where you're not always consuming and going through digestion. There's that. There's autophagy. um, There's some mental and cognitive cognitive benefits associated with fasting. But if you are coming to fasting for weight loss, the real reason why it works is it helps you uh, 
um, maintain a calorie deficit. And for me, I think it makes it simpler. Now, with all that being said, is having a little bit of milk in your coffee, let's say at seven, eight o'clock in the morning, if you have 35, 40 calories of milk in your coffee, is that going to affect your overall calories for the day and throw you out of a deficit? The answer is no. If you're eating sensibly in your window, that little bit of milk in your coffee is not going to affect the calorie equation. That's strictly from a numbers perspective, calories in versus calories out. So my recommendation for people is, you know, if you want to have a little bit of creamer in your coffee, I am okay with that. The thing to understand is the reason why having cream in your coffee and for some people why that doesn't allow them uh, to hit their weight loss goals while fasting is more on the mindset side of things than it is on the calories. And here's what I mean. If you have a little bit of coffee, a little bit of cream in your coffee or a little bit of milk in your coffee, and you tell yourself, you know, I have broken my fast. Well, technically that is correct. All right. You've consumed calories. You've broken your fast. But if you tell yourself, because I have broken my fast, I can go ahead and start eating. And then because you had some milk in your coffee, well, now you want to have, you know, maybe a light granola bar, maybe something else. If you use that as a, okay, I've opened my eating window, I can start eating. That is what's going to trip you up far more than the 35 calories of milk in your coffee. So yes, if having a little bit of milk in your coffee helps you make it to get to noon to open your eating window, I am absolutely okay with that. That's why I say, you know, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Uh, Euphoria uh, asking, what about for those of us who want to gain weight and muscle? I'm 220. What do you recommend? So my recommendation, uh, I am not the expert in gaining. Well, I don't know. I've, I've done that enough uh, throughout my life. So maybe I know a thing or two about gaining weight. Um, it does come down to just like losing weight comes down to eating in a deficit. Gaining weight um, is about eating in a surplus But just like weight loss is simple, but it's not easy, the same could be said for those that are struggling to put on weight. It is simple, but not necessarily easy. So my recommendation is going to be similar in the vein that I just want you to slowly increase your calories over time. And by staying consistent for a long time, that's where you're going to see results. The same way if I'm working with somebody and they are eating you know, enormous, enormously over their calorie limit, meaning, you know, they're consistently gaining weight or not able to lose weight. I'm going to start by just having you reduce your calories. It may not put you in a deep deficit, but if we can have a reduction and do that consistently for a long time, you will start to lose. The opposite is true as if you're trying to gain weight. If you were to drink an additional protein shake every day or get an additional hundred calories a day, you may not gain significant weight, but if you can get in that additional 100 calories a day, you do that for a month, then you increase it again. Do it to the point where you can increase consistently because at the end of the day, the real secret to weight loss or weight gain or anything in the physical fitness side of things, the real secret is consistency. So you got to just stay consistent for a long time. All right, our next question coming in is, uh, what about, or I'm sorry, uh, do you think, this is from Alpha Plays, do you think it's necessary to stop eating fast food completely to lose weight, and how does your calorie to protein look like? So I don't think it's uh, necessary to stop eating fast food completely, and the biggest thing that I'll say about that is, you know, I don't think anything for the most part, everything in moderation, even moderation and moderation. But to cut out fast food completely is to imply that you are going in and your plan is to never eat it again. And I think if that is your plan going in, that's the kind of thing that can trip you up because do you think you're going to go the rest of your life and never eat fast food? Now, there are a select few people that can do that. Um, But if that may not be realistic to you, even changing the verbiage around it, so knowing that you may not eliminate it completely, but I do think you can reduce it. So with fast food, my recommendation to people is try to make a healthier option when you're going out to eat. If you watch my videos, you know I eat out plenty. I'm not the biggest fan of cooking, but when I eat out, 
I try not to eat the most unhealthy thing on the menu, the thing with the most calories, which is what I did before. It's like, hey, I'm going to Chick-fil-A. I may as well get a spicy chicken sandwich, a large fry. Um, I'm going to dip my fries in ketchup and mayo, a ton of calories there, and I'm going to get the cookies and cream milkshake. Like, If I'm going to have a little bit of fast food, I may as well have the worst thing on the menu. That's what I used to do is if fast food is bad, Therefore, I'm going to get the worst thing in for a penny, in for a pound. Um, so try to get something that is a little better. You also don't have to get the healthiest thing on the menu. Don't go to a fast food place and order a salad because you should get it. Because while, yeah, that can be good, um, if you leave from there and you're not mentally satisfied as well, that's going to occupy your mind and that's going to cause some overeating later on. So that's the first thing is you don't have to cut it out completely. Um, it's just find ways that you can continue to improve a little better, make a little better choices, eat there a little less frequently. If you're going to fast food five times a week and you reduce that to three or even four, well, you just saved 52 trips over the course of a year. And if you stay consistent for the rest of your life, that's really where it adds up. Uh, So that's part of it. And as far as calories to protein for me personally, um, you asked about what my split looks like. I typically, I try to stay in or around about 2,300 calories. That's probably around my maintenance. And I try to get 170 to 200 grams of protein on days where I'm not doing one meal. That's what I shoot for personally. We're going to do something a little different. I'm excited for this next segment is we're going to go to a poll. So I put up a poll uh, on my YouTube community tab a few days ago, kind of asking why people uh, watch the videos. If you've never seen one of my videos, uh, typically I'm known for the uh, the what I eat in a day. Uh, after I lost 60 pounds, I saw one of the questions coming in was, what do you eat? And I thought, man, I get that question a lot. I'm just going to start making videos showing people what I eat. But I asked why you follow my content. And uh, here were the responses, kind of a little bit split across the board. So 13% for uh, inspiration and motivation on their own weight loss journey. Uh, 13% said, you know, for mindful eating slash intermittent fasting tips. 63% said that they watch just for entertainment, which for me, that is a high compliment. Anytime I see a comment uh, or somebody saying something along the lines like, hey, I'm not even on a weight loss journey. I just like watching the videos. That really is high praise. I really do appreciate that. I try to make the videos as entertaining as possible. Um, so that that means a lot, but that a lot of people watching watch just for the entertainment. Um, 4% said to learn sustainable strategies for weight loss and, uh, and 8% coming in saying, I have no idea who even are you. Um, so about 3,000 people voting there. But I have to tell you, I am for those Uh, What is probably around 30% that are watching, either if you're on your own weight loss journey or you're just looking for some tips and motivation, that is part of the reason why we started this podcast. It's an opportunity to go a little deeper, to answer your questions, maybe give you a little bit of motivation, a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of help along the way. So if you are tuning into this and you are interested in weight loss, um, support. Again, that really means a lot to me as well. And if you're just watching for the entertainment, heck, if you're listening to this podcast just for the entertainment, be sure to uh, to drop a comment and let me know. And if you'd like to join me uh, live on the show, we are going to start doing some call-in guests as well. Just fill out the link in the description of this video or in the show notes if you are listening to this on your podcast. All right, let's jump back into a few more questions. So our next question coming in from Sarah says, uh, hey, Ryan, I love your videos. I've been really interested in trying the Premier Protein Shakes, but I'm worried they are too many calories. Do you recommend drinking them as a meal replacement? Um, So I love Premier Protein. Obviously, I am now a Premier Protein Shaker, um, which is really awesome. They're, I think, probably the biggest brand deal that I've done to date, but I didn't start working with them until January of this year. I've been posting my videos for the last three drinking premiere and they reached out to me. Um, I literally, so they send me a few flavors, but I still buy them myself because I buy more than they send me. Um, I've got, I'm looking at some here in my office right now. So they're only, the shakes are about 160 calories, which is not that much. Um, again, everybody's a little different, Sarah. So I'm not sure kind of what your current height, weight activity level is, but at 160 calories, I I typically do not look at the Premier Protein Shakes as a meal replacement. I look to them to help 
increase my protein and try to hit my protein targets. I said just a little bit ago, I try to get between about 170 to 200 grams of protein a day. And where the shakes really come in handy is they're about 160 calories, but they have 30 grams of protein. So if I drink two of those a day, that's I'm a third of the way to my protein goal. I try not to do more than two a day just because I do want to try to get a majority of my protein from whole food sources, things like uh, meats or any of the vegetables that ha- are high in protein. Um but that is why I use them. So I personally don't look at them as meal replacements. In the past, if I was going to do a shake as a meal replacement, I'm going to add stuff to it. So that's why I'm going to do a protein shake, maybe some peanut butter, um, some Greek yogurt as well. Try to get it up around that four to 500 calorie before I'm personally calling it like a meal replacement shake. So Lindsay asks, do you find that the shakes fill you up? Uh, So for me, most of the time, if I have a shake, I'm having it about 30 minutes before I start eating. So it can be nice. Um, It blunts my appetite a little bit. I don't know that I necessarily stay full from them um, just because my own eating patterns, uh, I have one just as a way to get more protein in. Um, It doesn't fill me up too much, but it also, it doesn't leave me hungry either. Like I would say the difference between having a protein shake and uh, a bag full of Doritos is after I have the protein shake about 15, 20 minutes later, I do feel it. Whereas the Doritos, I can eat 400 calories of Doritos, 30 minutes go by. It doesn't even feel like it did a dent and I'm ready to keep eating, which is part of the reason why I gained weight is because you eat things that don't actually satiate you, which means you continue to eat. All right, we'll take one final question here. And uh, from Ole says, how do you deal with others judging you for your meal choices? I'm always a little scared of others' comments, e.g. when I order a salad. So this is a great question, Ole, and really the thing that I will tell you and the thing to think about, and part of this is because I'm getting a little older now, getting a little more mature. I'm 37 now, and I think I am starting to develop where I care a little less and less about what others think about me. And part of that is because I realize we are in our own heads judging ourselves much more than other people are judging us. Um, An example that I can give you right now is look at some of the people that are uh, close to you, maybe people that don't live with you. Think of some of your close friends and family and think about the last few times that you have hung out with them in and around a meal setting and tell me the last thing that you can remember that they ate. I know I spend hardly any time thinking about what other people are eating, and the same is true for other people and your food choices. We think people are judging our choices, but the reality is um, everyone is is concerned with themselves and nobody is judging what you're eating. The same also goes when I started fasting, I thought, you know, if I were to go to a social function and pass on food, people are gonna be like, why aren't you eating? Why aren't you eating? But I find nine times out of 10, it never is even brought up because it's simple as saying, you know, I'm not hungry. Uh, so that would be right. My recommendation is um, as far as dealing with other people judging you is just take a, a quick moment and ask, you know, did they say something or am I assuming what other people are thinking? Because if that is the case, I think more often than not, um, those thoughts are coming from you and not them. So that's my two cents on that. And, and that's one of the things that I think about is, you know, I'm going to make the choices that are best for me and my goals um, and just kind of live with those. So again, thank you very much for those of you that are joining on the live stream. I really appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions in the future that you'd like to see answered, again, please be sure to like and subscribe on the YouTube channel so you can be notified anytime we go live. And if there are any segments that you want to see in this uh, show, be sure to let us know. We love to hear your feedback. We started today's show um, based off of a, a question that we had gotten in our last show talking about the scale. So we absolutely um, look forward to each and every one of your feedback. And remember, 
you know, at the end of the day, the thing that is important is that whether you are on a weight loss journey or not, we want to build the habits and move in the right direction. Where we are in our position is not as important as where we are going. Remember, we are not looking to lose weight fast. We're looking to lose weight forever. Thanks again, and I will catch you in the next episode.